Good morning, everyone. I'm Hemant Gaikwad. I'm the validation architect at uh, Dell Technologies. With me, I have Shilish, who's the senior director at Dell Technologies. And then we also have Rahul Vishwakarma, who's a graduate student at the California State University. We're going to talk about effective device thermal management based on dynamic ranking of the device cooling needs. So we have a short agenda. We'll be talking about the introduction and the motivation behind having this particular solution brought through. We'll talk about why do we need thermal management in the first place. We'll talk about the solution and then how this approach that we've taken is, is agnostic to any ML algorithm that you could use. And lastly, we'll talk about the applications or the utility of, of this particular solution. In this case, we are trying to see how best we could have thermal and cooling management done in a much better and optimized way, in turn, reducing the carbon footprints. So let's go to the motivation first. If, if you look at uh, how the uh, market has shifted over the last few years, uh, there has been a lot of advancements in, in the computing field where, where you have uh, much denser computing solutions available now with, with multi-core, multi-processors, hyper-threading architectures being available. Uh, hyperscale storage being available. Uh, you would have multiple redundant controllers sitting on, on your uh, devices. At the same time, the number of PCI uh, slots that, that you could have on a particular device, that's, that's also increased tremendously. All this is directly proportional to how much increase you would have uh, in terms of temperature for a particular device. And then if you look at uh, all the existing methods that, that are available today for uh, device or data center uh, cooling, those are not that optimal. And, and what we're trying to see is how best we, we could uh, try and solve that problem. But before that, let's, let's look at what problems do we have. Uh, firstly, uh, fragmentation of power and thermal needs. If you will look at, um, the existing device cooling or thermal management solutions or techniques, they are policy or rule driven and, and mostly they are uh, static and manually uh, implemented based on some intuitions. However, uh, is that optimal? Maybe not. Um, again, um, the cooling um, and the thermal management is, is completely agnostic to what workloads you're running on a particular device. There could be devices which are running highly uh, critical workloads which, which, which are quite heavy uh, in terms of computing needs. But then uh, when, you, when you try and apply any thermal or all power or cooling um, management techniques, those don't really take these workloads that are running on these devices into account. So that's, that's one problem. And then what it results in, in you having uh, systems which are much fragmented for uh, power cooling and thermal management, which which is something that that we'll try to see how we try to address. Uh, next, uh, the high power consumptions. If you start looking at uh, go beyond the devices and look at the data center itself, right? You'll see that uh, there's constant cooling that is provided. Uh, for any data center environments and, and and this cooling is set to a particular temperature and that's that's how um, the devices say respect of where they sit uh, in the data center they are being cooled uh, again if you look at uh, devices itself right we'll, uh, talk about use cases where where you have fans running at higher speeds when when their temperature rises but then these adaptive techniques are also not uh, optimized for power consumptions because the moment you start having the fan driving at, at much higher speeds, you, you are again consuming a lot of power. And lastly, if you look at uh, the data center again, right? Mostly in terms of uh, achieving business continuity, right? So what would be done at, at the data center level is you'll have your air conditioning running at, at much higher uh, cooling temperatures than what is really needed. And, and that's that's where uh, the overcooling is again going to be one of the factors which is going to lead to uh, much higher power consumption. 
So if you have to put it together, long story short, devices are provided uh, cooling irrespective of whether they need it or not. Um, every device in the data center is cooled by a centrally conditioned air. And that's, that's again done at a constant temperature, uh, irrespective of how, uh, what, what is the rate at which the heat is dissipated from these devices. Um, what is needed is that if there are devices which are uh, heating at a much higher rate, then the cooling should be uh, offered accordingly. And, and that's, that's what needs to happen where, where you have your uh, uh, CPUs, your memories, your uh, disk and NICs. Uh, if, if they get heated, obviously the performance for these uh, components is going to drop. And then what is needed is that you provide uh, the right amount of cooling that is needed. And then that should be context sensitive, which means that you try and understand what workloads are running. You try and understand what, what condition in which, which the device is running. And then based on that, provide uh, the exact cooling that is needed per device level. So with that, let's, let's start looking at uh, what's the solution approach that we've taken. So the primary intent uh, for us has been to be able to rank these devices in terms of their thermal characteristics and then provide recommendations with respect to how do you do uh, effective device thermal management based on uh, historical data that you pull and then you do uh, priority predictions for the future uh, device statistics. The solutions uh, that, that we put together as a framework is, is it's it's good. It is autonomous in the sense that you don't have to worry about all of these factors. The devices are going to be autonomously categorized into uh, specific uh, categories saying that these are the devices which, which need uh, you know, higher cooling versus these are the devices which need uh, much lesser cooling. And again, this, this is done with, with uh, uh, proper uh, continuous accuracy, uh, for each of these predictions that we have. And, and then for any predictions that we put together, we also have detailed root cause analysis using causal analysis for any of the factors that, that are uh, going to hamper your uh, cooling or thermal characteristics. Now let's have a look at uh, the proposed solution. So this slide depicts what has been the overall flow for, for this particular solution, okay? Uh, you can see that that we collect the historical data for a good number of parameters, these uh, different component data for temperatures like CP sensors, it could be uh, Ethernet, it could be memory sensors, it could be any other temperature sensors that are sitting on the motherboard, it could be the read uh, uh, data, it could be the write data that that you're that's, that's happening on your devices, and and with all of this data, then what we do is, is to, uh, try to uh, generate uh, an end step ahead prediction for, for all of these factors. And, and, and based on that, generate a time series data. So once we have a time series data, uh, which is unlabeled, uh, what we try doing is, is have HDB scan used to have the entire data set uh, cluster into two clusters, C1 and C2. Um, and once once you have these two distinct clusters being created, what we start doing is then have uh, those treated as, as a binary classifier problem and then try to have those classified into two discrete labels, uh, high and low. And what we also have is a conformal predictor working along with, with the classifier, which will help provide uh, confidence scores for all of your data points that, that you have looked at. One more uh, important uh, piece of, of the overall solution is that we, we've put in uh, a solution where, where we look at uh, all the data points and then, then based on specific thresholds that we've set, look at if, if those uh, data points are uh, good to be rejected. Uh, and then based on that, we, we have uh, a good number of uh, predictions rejected, uh, saying that they don't fall in into the uh, data set that, that we are looking at. Once we have uh, 
all the non-rejected entries uh, made available, what we'll start doing is stack rank them uh, based on the confidence scores. Here you can see that, that we have them listed. And then what we do is start, start stack ranking these entries based on the confidence. Once we have the data being cleansed and, and, and the accurate data or the accurate predictions being brought after the uh, all the predictions being uh, taken care of, what you can see is, is a table which, which has the device IDs, uh, the labels high and low, and then uh, the confidence for each of these predictions. What we then do is list these in, in the descending order and, and the entries which, which are high up in the rank, uh, other devices which, which need uh, much better attention in terms of uh, cooling. And, and that's how we uh, categorize and, and then start uh, having the admins provide uh, definite insights around what are the devices or set of devices that they need to focus their energies around. Here you can see on the slide, uh, you could see the data points which, which we put together for the uh, 200 step ahead uh, predictions and you can see CPU, Ethernet, uh, read, writes uh, that, that we put together on, on this particular slide. So coming to the actual proposed solution, what, what we've tried doing is um, have a classification model based on uh, confirmed prediction and then uh, translate this classification problem as uh, ranking where, where as, as we saw in the initial slides, we started looking at uh, important data points in terms of CPU temperatures, uh, temperatures for different sensors, system load, uh, voltages, health-related uh, metrics, even some error conditions that, that we look at, and then transform this data into the end step ahead using Fourier time series, uh, and then store those data points. Once we have the time series data made available, we, we then have a HDB scan used to create two distinct clusters, uh, C1 and C2. And once once we have that, we start putting it as a, a binary classifier uh, problem with along with confirmable prediction to get uh, the confidence and credibility scores for each of those predictions. We then work uh, towards uh, having continuous accuracy being targeted where, where we start rejecting uh, certain predictions based, based on uh, specific thresholds that we've set. And once that is done, then we start translating all these predictions um, into uh, ranks. And then based on those ranks, we, we could have the admins look at what, what are the predictions which, which needs to be rejected versus what are the predictions that needs to be taken care of. Uh, also, what, what this helps uh, do is, is provides the admin with, with uh, definite insights on uh, which devices they need to start working on versus which devices they can um, have the cooling uh, being taken care of by, by maybe some standard practices which they've already been doing. And then uh, once once they have uh, these predictions with, with them, with, with along with the ranking, uh, they can start uh, treating um, each of these ranked devices based on what needs they have. Coming to the benefits part, um, the overall solution is, is targeted at uh, looking at how uh, we could move towards a much greener data center uh, and have proper control um, over uh, the different aspects of, of uh, thermal management or cooling management for from a data center perspective where, where admins get much better control and insights in terms of knowing uh, which are the devices which need uh, much uh, higher cooling versus which are the devices which need lower cooling. And then based on that, they can start um, placing these devices physically uh, in specific uh, sections of the data center. Uh, again, this would help them uh, plan their uh, data center capex uh, budgets much better because they could get to know what, what are the rack spaces that are needed, how do they uh, uh, plan their uh, data center structure so that uh, each and every device which, which needs uh, uh, dedicated cooling is, is taken care of. Uh, in terms of uh, granular device level thermal visibility, 
uh, you can get to know which which are the devices which are underutilized and then you can start uh, having those resources also being planned much better again uh, in terms of the overall data center right when when you get to know that okay there are certain set of devices which need much uh, better attention you can start looking at the right ambient temperature which means you are not again overcooling the uh, data center or specific sections of the data center but providing the right amount of cooling for any of your devices so that with that it, it is obviously going to help you uh, reduce on the uh, energy bills at the same time uh, the problems that we have with respect to overcooling is is uh, obviously going to uh, stay away from your data centers and, and then you uh, also have uh, issues like undercooling being targeted and, and have focused uh, cooling provided for uh, certain devices or set of devices that, that you really want. Coming to the summary section. So we started off with an intention of trying to see what uh, attention each of the devices need. And then based on that, we provided the required attention to these devices uh, by having effective uh, thermal management uh, based on looking at the historical data, trying to provide an a priori predictions for, for all the future device statistics. At the same time, we wanted to make it autonomous and not have policy or rule driven, where we wanted to have all these devices autonomously identified based on what, what uh, specific cooling needs each of these devices have, and then uh, also help provide these insights to the lab admins so that they could um, try to have these devices grouped in specific uh, sets uh, and, and, and then enforce that uh, there is no uh, devices which, which are obviously going to be underperforming or going down just because uh, cooling needs were not taken care. And lastly, what we are also trying to do is map all of these data together where, where we are taking uh, data points from uh, the thermal sensors for various components at the same time trying to have those map uh, onto failures that we see on the devices over a period of uh, uh, a few months or a few years. And, and then based on that, uh, have our feature predictions uh, carved out. What it means is that you would have a definite relationship or a definite uh, understanding of what's going uh, with the, what's going on with your systems, and then based on that, you could have continuous accuracy and detailed root cause analysis done uh, by by having all this causal relationship uh, made available to the lab admins. So with that, we come towards the end of our session. Uh, I hope you've. Uh, liked what, what we uh, had to share today. If you have any doubts, if you have any comments, any suggestions, you could reach out to us. Uh, we will have our uh, uh, email IDs provided after the session. And uh, we, we are free to take any questions if you have any.